Welcome to iLecture Online, and here's another example of how to do word problems in algebra using two variables. And then, of course, if we're using two variables, you'll have to use a two, two equations, two unknowns kind of techniques to solve it in the end. But setting up a problem like this is a little bit different using two variables, so let's go ahead and show the examples and then show you how to do one like this. It says here that in a class of 50 students, the number of females, and that doesn't look right, I think I have an extra S in there. There, that looks better. Females is two more than five times the number of males. How many males and females are there in the class? All right, so since we're going to use two variables, it's always very important, imperative actually, that you, that you very carefully define the two variables. So you're going to write let x equal, and then you'll find what x is equal to. In this case, let's s x equal the number of females. Sometimes students get a little lazy about doing this. They say, oh, why bother? Mm, it's actually a very important step. So always do that. So let y equal the number of males. There. Once you've done that, now you go read the problem and try to use x and y to come up with two equations. So it says that in a class of 50 students, the number of females is two more than five times the number of males. Well, just in this part of the sentence alone, since you know that there's only males and females in the class and there's a total of 50 students, that means that x plus y equals 50. The number of females plus the number of males must add up to 50. And then it says that the number of females, and since the number of females is defined as y, we can then say that y is equal to two more plus two than five times the number of males. So five times x. Oh, wait a minute. I think I just got that wrong. Whew. Y represents the, that's why it's so important to very carefully define your variables. It says the number of females, and the number of females is x. So x is equal to two more, plus two, five times the number of males, and the number of males is y, so five times y plus two. Notice if I had not very well defined my x and y, I probably would not have caught my mistake and you would not have gotten the problem, or I would not have gotten the problem right. So that shows how important it is to define your variables carefully. So let's recap quickly. In a class of 50 students, so x plus y must be 50, and the number of females, which is defined by x, is equal to 2 more plus 2 than 5 times the number of males, so plus 2 added to 5 times y, where y is the number of males. And now we're good to go. So how do we solve these two equations and two unknowns? Well, we can already use this equation right here because it's already solved. Uh, it solved x in terms of y. We substitute that into the other equation. So instead of x, we write 5y. So that's this equation right here. 5y plus 2 instead of the variable x plus y equals 50. So notice that this x is replaced by 5y plus 2. Now we put all the y's in one place, all the numbers on the other place. So 5y plus y is equal to 50 minus 2. Remember, when the 2 goes across the equal sign, the sign changes. Now we can combine like terms on both sides. So this is 6y is equal to 48. Divide both sides by the coefficient in front of y. And so that means that y is equal to 8. 48 divided by 6 is 8. So now, what does y represent? Again, if you have very good definition, you can go back and say y represents the number of males. So you can say there are eight males in the class. And then you go back to this equation uh, right here, the number of females. So here, let me get out of the way of the camera. So x represents the number of females is equal to five times y, which is the number of males. So five times eight plus two. 5 times 8 is 40, that's 40 plus 2, which is 42. So therefore, there are 42 females in that class. And that's how you do a problem like that. Again, very carefully define your variables. Come up with the two equations that you're going to need to solve the problem from the information given in the problem. Then, in this case, we solved for one of the variables in terms of the other. It was already in that form, so we didn't have to do anything. We then substitute that into the other equation, replacing the x by what x is equal to in the other equation. And then you have an equation with just one variable, solve for the variable, and then you plug that back into one of the other two equations to solve for the 
other variable. And that's how you solve a problem like that using two variables.